My name is uh, Wisdom Akpalu, and uh, I uh, joined UNU WIDA uh, from January 2014. Uh, prior to joining WIDA, I was an Associate Professor of Economics at the State University of New York at Farmingdale, where I was teaching courses in economics, doing research mostly on uh, sustainable development issues in developing countries, specifically Africa. And I was also uh, chairing the Department of Economics uh, before I joined uh, WIDA. And I'm originally from Ghana, I would like to say, uh, but I'm now an American citizen, and I'm now back in Ghana trying to help with capacity. When I was young and I was uh, thinking of what to do in life, uh, I was very curious about why some countries uh, are doing better than others. I used to uh, watch the news, uh, read some papers, and I realized that most African countries were struggling and other countries were doing okay. Uh, so my curiosity eventually led me to try to find answers, and that is what brought me to economics when I had someone who introduced economics to me as a discipline that can help me address some of those questions. And then uh, within economics, I got quite interested in a number of uh, issues or areas. And one area that I got interested in was environmental economics because I realized that natural resources form a very strong basis for uh, Africa's development. And then I also got interested in econometrics because I was interested in uh, using uh, quantitative uh, or quantitative methods in trying to address some of these important issues that are confronting the continent. When I was teaching in the U.S., uh, every summer I go back to Ghana and then go to my former university, which is University of Cape Coast, uh, where I meet my former students, my colleagues, and then some new students. And then every time I went there, I saw the need for me to go back and help because uh, there were so many people who wanted to have what I had, to have the knowledge I have, very smart, passionate young men and women who really wanted to also uh, become researchers. But there was lack of capacity to actually train them. Uh, and I felt that uh, at some point I needed to come back and help build that capacity and also try to make my research, which I have done mostly on Ghana, uh, impart policy. Because being there, being in Ghana and taking part in discussions uh, is quite different from being abroad and working on Ghana. So I had all these thoughts. And then when I saw the, uh, the advert that WIDA was looking for someone uh, to uh, be a part of a program that was uh, geared towards capacity building in, in Ghana and Africa at a PhD level in development economics, I got overly excited and I didn't even think twice. So I applied for the job and then here I am at WIDA. My connection with WIDA is like a marriage made in heaven because we, t we seem to have so much in common. Uh, first of all, uh, my research has been primarily on uh, natural resource management in developing countries. And I've worked on fisheries, gold mining, uh, uh, demand for biomass fuel by household, and a couple of other things. And I realized that those are the issues, uh, including climate change, by the way. And those are the issues that WIDA has also been very passionate about. WIDA is very concerned about doing poli uh, research that will have policy impact research that can influence developmental processes that are taking place in, in Africa. And those are the same issues that I've been working with, uh, trying to make impact in the very little way, I, the very small way I can. So uh, that was the first thing that motivated me to come to WIDA. Secondly, uh, in my own way, I've also been trying to build capacity. Uh, every summer when I go to Ghana, I organize quantitative research workshops uh, where I teach the uh, young uh, lecturers and some 
times even people in the, in medical the medical field and other field how to do research how to collect data analyze data and write reports so uh, I realized that here was a situation where WIDA was doing research that I was passionate about uh, and then also trying to build capacity something I've been thinking about for a very long time so I realized that was something I really wanted to do and moreover uh, there are some incredible uh, smart researchers at WIDA uh, who are working on the same issues that I'm working with so we could collaborate and work together on many exciting problems in Africa and make the impact that I've always been wanting to make. So I felt it would be great for me to come back and do just that. I just hope uh, I will be able to continue to make whatever little impact I've been trying to make through my research. But even bigger is the fact that now I have an institutional backing, an institution that is also doing similar things that are very interested in. And then they try to, as much as possible, reach out to policymakers. So I hope that my being here will make it possible for me to communicate my research output uh, directly to uh, policymakers. And I also hope that my coming will help establish this graduate program, uh, PhD program in economics in Ghana to be uh, a very good one, uh, which will be sustained over a long period of time, and then train the resources, or the, the people that we, we critically need to address those issues, uh, people who, have, who are living with those problems and have good understanding of those problems, to train them to be able to acquire the skills, to be able to do the necessary research, come out with policies that could address those problems. I have done quite a bit on fisheries economics and uh, when I started working, you are right, uh, there has been a few things that were done but not in fisheries economics, so uh, I tried to make some contributions in that direction. First of all, I tried to find out reasons why small-scale fishers uh, are violating most of the fishing regulations uh, in Ghana. For example, uh, they fish with nets that have smaller net sizes, so why do they keep doing this? Although we all know that if you have a resource that, is, uh, uh, that can replenish itself, that is renewable, if you harvest too much today, there is little to harvest tomorrow. So why will these fishermen be doing those things to themselves? Uh, and then I also tried to find out the extent to which uh, those variables that we think about in crime and punishment, like uh, the risk of punish, uh, being punished and then the severity of punishment, that is the probability of being caught and fined, uh, uh, to what extent do those play roles in societies where people can bribe uh, their way out of, uh, of, of, of problems when they are caught? And uh, also investigate other new factors such as uh, the rate at which uh, social, social factors, social factors, religious factors, and the rate at which people discount the future. Uh, in other words, if, people are, if fishermen are more impatient, does it affect uh, the intensity at which they violate the regulation. Also try to see whether people who violate the regulation are intrinsically different from those who do not. For example, uh, we found out that uh, a fisherman who is less skillful is more likely to go out there and fish illegally. And of course it makes some sense. Uh, and then there has been other findings like uh, we have a situation where the small-scale fishers uh, who are those I'm mostly concerned with, they fish near the shore and we have other fishers who fish far away. Uh, according to uh, the UN Convention on the Law of the Sea, uh, Ghana has 200 nautical miles, but if we cannot fish uh, close to uh, the, the, the length of our region, then Ghana has to uh, give part out for uh, this international uh, fishing uh, companies to come and extract. And then we have a situation where areas that were supposed to be natural reserves, supposed to produce the fish for the fishermen to catch, are also being fished by these boats. So how do we design incentives, taxes, so that they don't overfish there? In, uh, and as long as they overfish and they catch too much, it will affect what the small-scale fishers are getting here. So how do we make policies that will 
uh, ensure that they catch just enough so the small scale fishers who harvest the fish for their, sustain, uh, their livelihood will continue to have catches from one period to the other. Uh, and there has been other, other findings, other interesting findings as well.